Father, we acknowledge that one of the greatest gifts given by you is your word of Scripture. Help us now to understand it, to see what it says and what it means for us, and then help us faithfully to obey it to the glory of your name. Amen. It all began as an intellectual discussion. This teacher of the Jewish law stood up and asked a question about how to get hold of eternal life. Jesus, in a way that was typical of him, replied by asking a further question. You're an expert in the law, he said. What does it say there? And the lawyer replied, quoting the Old Testament, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. Exactly, said Jesus. There's your answer. Now go and practice what you preach. The lawyer felt rather a fool. He'd asked a question not necessarily to trip Jesus up, but perhaps just to see what he would say. And he'd ended up by answering the question himself. He wanted to come off better than that, to show that his question had been worthwhile. (coughs) And so he put another problem to Jesus. Yes, but who exactly is my neighbor? And then Jesus told a story about three people, which we've just heard in this morning's gospel. A priest, a Levite, and a Samaritan. All three saw a man who had been beaten up by robbers on his way from Jerusalem to Jericho. Deliberately, Jesus uses precisely the same word each time. Verse 31, the priest saw him. Verse 32, the Levite saw him. Verse 33, the Samaritan saw him. You couldn't miss him there, thrown down by the side of the road. All three saw him all right, but only one had compassion. We're told, not told what the priest and the Levite felt or whether they had any feelings at all. I expect they had fear perhaps, or revulsion, but we're not told. In each case, we're told they saw him, and that was all. And so in the third case, as you read the story carefully, it hits you hard. Look again at verse 33. But a Samaritan, while traveling, came near him, and when he saw him, he was moved with compassion. He didn't just uh, clinically discover the need of the wounded man in the road. He was touched by it. It got to him. He felt an emotion that seems to have been characteristic of Jesus himself, who was, we're told, stirred by compassion. In the story, all three made a move. Two of them moved away. They saw the body and recoiled. Verse 31, when the priest saw him, he passed by on the other side. Again, verse 32, the Levite saw him and passed by on the other side. They didn't want to get involved. They got as far away from the injured man as they could and hurried quickly on. The third man moved too, but he moved towards the body. He was determined to see what the need was and to see what he could do. All three moved, but only one acted. The priest and the Levite did nothing, averted their eyes perhaps, and went on their way. Only the third man did anything, and what a lot he did. First, verse 34, he inspected the wounds and carefully poured on the medicine of the day, wine to disinfect the wound and oil to soothe it. Then he bandaged up the places where the body was cut and bleeding. 
Next, he refused to get back on his own animal and put the sick man on it instead while he walked. He brought him to an inn and cared for him in person. And when he had to move on, he gave the innkeeper enough money for several days and told him to look after the sick man for as long as was needed. If there was more to pay, he'd see to it that the bill was met. Only this third man acted. And so Jesus comes to the end of his story. He hasn't answered the, quest- the lawyer's question. The lawyer wanted to know who was his neighbor because he assumed, like most Jews of his day, that his neighbor was his fellow Jew. Some men were his neighbors to be loved and some were not. Jesus thinks the question isn't worth answering. Of course, every man, woman, and child is our neighbor. The question is how to be a good neighbor how to love your neighbor. And so Jesus again asks a question. It's there in verse 36. Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of the robbers? And the lawyer can't fail to give the right answer. The one who showed him mercy, of course. The one who had compassion. Now, we miss the whole point of the story if we don't see that this was an extreme case. Jesus deliberately chose his characters. The injured man, of course, was a Jew. It's never said, but it's implied throughout. And the whole story loses its point if he wasn't. Of all unlikely people, it was a Samaritan who came to the rescue of the robber's victim. In Jesus' day, Samaritans were hated by Jews as racial and religious half-castes. And yet here is a Samaritan doing for a Jew what no Jew would ever dream of doing for a Samaritan. The Samaritan showed love when it was dangerous. The road from Jerusalem to Jericho ran down a steep descent through barren country. It was over 17 miles long, and the road dropped dramatically by over 3,000 feet. It ran through rocky and desert country, providing ample opportunity for hidden robbers to waylay a lonely traveler. Better to hurry through quickly, thought the priest and the Levite. But this third man, this Samaritan, was prepared to risk his own safety to show what Jesus called neighbor love. A friend of mine once saw a man being mugged in the street. His first reaction was just what I'm sure would be mine and probably yours. Walk away quickly. Or, if you like, pass by on the other side. But he was a Christian, and Jesus calls us to love even when it is dangerous. My friend got involved, separated the fighters, and ended up at the hospital casualty department himself. For him, love meant taking the blows himself, as it did for Jesus. So the answer to the question, who is my neighbor, is not, as we were taught in Sunday school, everybody, though of course in a sense that is true. The answer of Jesus is a neighbor is someone who shows compassion to another in need, irrespective of who the helper or the person in need may be. It is less a question of seeing every other person as my neighbor, but more importantly, of my being actively a neighbor to others not on the basis of their race, nationality, occupation, gender, skin color, or personality, but on the basis of need. And who does not need love and compassion? It all began as an intellectual discussion. When this lawyer stood up and asked the question, 
But it rarely stays that way with Jesus. At each stage, Jesus comes back with a challenge. The lawyer recites the great commandment of love, and Jesus answers, verse 28, you have given the right answer. Do this, and you will live. In other words, show your love for God in the way you love your neighbor. Jesus is saying that we show our love for God by breaking down the barriers which divide his children from one another. And he uses, as an example, a neighbor who is of another religion, another race. God's way is one of compassion which unites and includes. This is what true religion is all about. And so Jesus tells the story of the Good Samaritan and ends by saying to the lawyer in verse 37, Go and do likewise. That, of course, is a message for every one of us. In answer to an academic theological question, who is my neighbor? Jesus tells the Jewish lawyer not what or who is his neighbor, but to go and be a neighbor. Let's all be good neighbors. Let's end with a prayer. Holy and ever-loving God, you bind up our wounds, heal our sickness, and restore us to wholeness. Make us sensitive to all who are in need or trouble, that we may care for the suffering and be generous in our dealings. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.